Hey you guys, it is me, Laura. I am a homeschooling mom of three kids, ages three, seven, and ten. Sorry, my seven-year-old's about to have her birthday, so I had to think about that for a minute. But I am here today to actually share with you a little bit about my background before I had kids, as well as I am going to be sharing with you some tips and tricks for all about reading and ways that you can adapt it to meet the needs of your child. So my background before kids is um, in education and um, really working with people. So my degree is not an education degree. I'm gonna make that clear. I grew up with two teachers for parents. My dad spent time jumping back and forth between doing law and teaching. He would get bored doing one, so he'd do the other. Um, my mom was a teacher my whole growing up. She taught in a special education classroom and I was fortunate enough. Um, I went to a private school and she taught in the public school system, so our schedules weren't always aligned. So I was privileged to most of my breaks in school, be able to go to her into her classroom and help her uh, with her work there and I think that that had a huge part in shaping who I am and kind of the way that I look at life and look at learning. Um, I throughout my life had many people constantly tell me you should be a teacher, you should be a teacher, you should be a teacher and I always said no and the reason why is because when I'm in a classroom setting I feel so um, confined and there's so much going on and I am very I'm an introvert I do really well one-on-one -on -one. so um, I went on to school I studied to be a pastor actually when I realized that that wasn't going to work I didn't know what to do I felt kind of at a crisis point so I just graduated with the quickest degree that the the degree that I could finish the soonest and wanted to see what was happening there now from my time at college to many years after what I did and what I loved was tutoring. I have, I actually have tutored kids from kindergarten all the way up through high school level, tu I mean through college level tutoring. And that is what I love because it's all about meeting with students one-on-one -on -one, um, and helping them to have whatever they need to learn what they're trying to learn. And it's all about um, adapting. And I like that every single person, every single tutoring session, everything is different. And um, I love being creative and coming up with solutions that can really help people in areas that they're struggling in. So after I graduated, I tutored for a few years. Um, and then I had actually a teaching opportunity open up to me. Now, I do not have a teaching degree, but I was hired um, and I took classes to toward an education degree for the time that I was teaching. I said I would teach until I got pregnant at that point. Um, I was really struggling with fertility. Pregnancy did not end up um, being something that, like, it. I, I didn't think it would be something that would happen as for sure not for a while because of the struggles that we were having. I ended up getting pregnant my first year of teaching. However, during that first year of teaching, I received um, lots of positive feedback in regard from my superiors about my ability to differentiate instruction for each child. That year I had a classroom that was very diverse in its needs. I taught kindergarten through second grade. I had some highly gifted students and I also had some students who were really struggling and all over in that spectrum. So I actually wrote an individualized lesson plan for every single child, which might sound crazy. Um, and I also structured my classroom in such a way that each child would be able to learn each subject based on their own individual learning styles. Um, this was very difficult. It really burned me out. This would not have been something sustainable for me to do. But what I have realized is that um, this individualization is really what I'm passionate about and learning how each child learns individually. So I have brought that to my homeschool. Um, I have done some tutoring on and off throughout the years that I've homeschooled as well. And I feel like that's really where my strength is. So it totally dawned on me <laughs> that I could, through my channel, share with you some ways to adapt the curriculum that you're using and the things that you're doing to hopefully fit the needs of your child better. Now, this is a very individual thing. And of course, I can't 
make a video that would for sure speak to everyone in every need, but hopefully I can give you ideas on ways to use some of the tools that you have um, and adjust them in ways that might work for your child. Now, since I have been homeschooling, I continue to keep up on educational research, especially as it relates to literacy, because that's something that I'm really passionate about. And I have seen kids struggle with reading and it's various levels of literacy have various amounts of research done. Some things are researched more than others, but I just find it all fascinating. And my goal is to learn as much as I can because I find that there is rarely one philosophy that works perfectly for every child. It's a matter of pulling pieces from the different philosophies and finding what clicks for your specific child. So that was a really long introduction and I'm hoping that this video won't be too incredibly long, but today I am going to use some of those skills to show you ways that you can adapt All About Reading. Now, some of these are things that I do with my own child who's going through All About Reading right now, and some of them are not. And I hope to show you ways that you can adapt it for children who are advanced and understanding the concepts and moving through very quickly, as well as ways that you can adapt the program for students who might be struggling. And my hope is to give you a bunch of ideas. I don't expect anyone to do all of these things, but hopefully you can find something that works for your child in a way that helps them to move forward in reading. Now, one thing that I do want to say with reading, and this is based on um, some research, although it's not heavily researched, um, it's based a lot on personal experience and what I have seen. Um, and it's something that other educators who are trained in these professions seem to agree with me on. And that is that there, not every child learns to read at the same time. And for most children, they reach a point where there is a click that happens in their mind. Now that doesn't mean that you should not do any reading instruction with them before that click happens. And it also does not mean that if the click does not happen by the time they're in kindergarten, first grade, or even second grade, that you should freak out. There are definitely things that you should watch for and be aware of, things like dyslexia, dysgraphia, learning disabilities, and you can give tools to help with those problems early on, which is going to give your student a much better start. But a lot of the things that I am going to be sharing with you today are things that would be used in some of these circumstances. However, saying that, if you do feel like your child has a learning problem, you wanna make sure to get their vision checked. You wanna make sure to have them evaluated so that any problems that they have, you can give them the tools they need to grow and to improve and to find um, success despite those challenges. So that being said, I'm gonna turn the camera around and show you a few things that you can do with the All About Reading program to adapt it for your child, as well as just a little bit about how the program works. And just so you know, I am just going to be talking about level one today. So these things can, I'm sure, apply across the board. Um, but I'm just talking about level one today. All right. So when you get all about reading one, you are going to have the teacher's guide. You're going to have the student book and you are going to get three readers. I just have one here that I am showing you today. And the way that the lessons are generally set up, it's slightly different at the beginning, but as you get into the program, you have a rhythm. Let's see if I can find where you have um, a lesson that you teach um, that usually has some sort of rule or skill or something that you're teaching your child. In this case, this is a shorter lesson. Let's see if I can find one that's more standard. Okay, so... Um, you will have a lesson like here where you're learning about the consonant team CK, how it makes the sound. You'll have a box here that kind of goes over the information for you as a teacher. Some of these phonics skills and some of these phonic, um, phonics rules are things that you might not have actually been taught by a child. All about reading is all about giving the child the rules and the foundation they need that they can then go on and build on. Now, it is true that for some children, all of these rules can be a little bit overwhelming. For others, they're extremely helpful because they give students a why. Why does this word sound like that? These rules will explain that. Um, it's a little different than their All About Spelling program, which teaches from a different perspective. It teaches the same rules, but from this perspective of creating the rule rather than decoding the word. So, I mean, creating the word, not the rule. Sorry about that. So you'll have this box that tells you what to do. 
then there'll be a reminder to review it phonogram cards as well as word cards and sometimes they'll give you an idea for a game to do. Now the teacher's guide in the back does have several game op activity ideas for um, reviewing the word cards, for doing the fluency sheets which we'll talk about in a minute, and for reviewing the phonograms. Now these games are mostly the same across the different types of activities. There are some slight differences and I'll talk a little bit more about those later. So you'll have a lesson that's completely scripted. It tells you what to do. You can use letter tiles or you can use the letter tiles app on the iPad, which is what both of my children have preferred so far. Um, I don't recommend that you use other like movable letters for this particularly because one of the things that helps in this program is by chunking vowels together or chunking consonants together. It helps your child to see some patterns a little bit better. So you'll go through this with your child and then there's usually an activity or two that come in the student book. And then you have your words that you're reviewing for this lesson and there's a fluency sheet that also will be in your student workbook. And um, then you're supposed to read a story with your child and mark the progress chart. And then after this lesson, you will have a lesson where you're reading a story. So you'll go review your words again, and then you'll have um, a practice, a warm up sheet, which I'll talk about. And then you'll have your um, skill, so some kind of comprehension or reading skill that you're working on. You'll read the story. Sometimes there's an activity before the story, sometimes there's an activity after. It depends on the skill that you're working on. And then there's also a second story that you can read as well. Then you read a story to your child and you mark your chart. So that's basically the layout. Then you'll go back to learning a new skill and then you'll have the stories again. So there is a lot here, but there is so much adaptation that can happen. So I'm just going to walk through a lesson. There's a number of ways that you can practice your word cards and your phonogram cards. There are some things that you can do that are not in here. One way to practice words or word cards is through copy work or handwriting. There are a lot of programs that can help you generate these handwriting sheets for your child as well as um, you can simply write something on a paper for your child to trace or for your child to copy. This is not included in All About Reading because their philosophy is that you learn writing separate from reading. There are plenty of kids who are able to read but do not have the fine motor skills to write, but there are some children that through the act of writing learn to read better. Now, if a child is writing and you have a child that struggles, this is not necessary for a child who's not struggling, it is important to have them make the sound of the word as they write it. So let me give you an example. One of the words in this lesson, well, this is a bad lesson to demonstrate that with because these are leap words. They have leap words which are um, don't follow rules that the child has already learned, but they're high frequency words that are important for the child to know. But if you have a word, okay, like let's see, here's long is a word. So when my child is writing the word long, if they're a child who struggles, I would have them write long and make every sound as they say it. Now I did not write that well because I'm holding the camera while I'm doing it. But um, that making those sounds as they write help to make more connections in their brain. And that's what this is all about. This is all about making connections and everybody's brain works a little bit different. So the way those connections are made are gonna be a little bit different. But for some kids, writing the words in that way can help them to learn the word and, and to know it better. Um, Another thing that you might try to do, some children find it easier to spell words, to code words, than to decode words or read them. And in that case, it might help for you to do some spelling with these words with your child. You can give them the words as a spelling test. You can let them build them, build the words with their tiles. You can let them um, write the words on a whiteboard. You can have them um, basically make the words in any way that they find fun and you can practice the words that way to help them to learn them for reading. There is also large motor activities. So doing things like setting the cards out and letting your child jump on them, letting them make the words with their body, um, letting them spray the words with uh, 
writing the words with sidewalk chalk and then letting them spray it with their squirt gun. These are all gonna be using large motor skills that help some children to retain information a little bit better. You can also make games where they go on scavenger, they go on hunts where you hide the words around the room, where you put them, if you have a child who responds well to sensory things, you can hide the words in a bucket of rice or beans or whatever. And if they find the word and they're able to read it, they can keep it. If they're not able to read it, they have to bury it and find it again. Um, these are all ways that you can practice these words. Now, one thing I do want to make clear is that you can do two lessons in a day. You can do one lesson in a week you take it at your child's pace and there are times that you might move faster and then you realize your child is struggling so you slow down and then you realize okay your child's picking up again so you speed up and slow down that is fine there is no continual pace that you have to do and a lot of times development happens in spurts and that is okay so we have our review we have our word cards here <laughs> And then the lesson is pretty scripted and that's one thing I would definitely make sure that you do each lesson so that you cover the concepts. The amount of practice your child needs will vary depending on your child, but at least making sure that you talk about those things. Then you have your activities and your fluency cards, um, your fluency sheet. So activities are generally fun and I have seen a lot of people on YouTube who will take the student book and prepare all the activities and put them in a um, in a sheet protector and then use them over and over again for each kid because th there's nothing that they write on. So technically these could be used again. I use them as consumable materials and I'll show you a little bit about why in just a minute. But instead of doing it that way, what I like to do is I take a notebook. You can get whatever size notebook. This is just an old notebook that I actually had in my house. And I take the things and put them in the book. So you've got your word flippers. The kids can go back and use these. Um, and then the activities, I have the little game pieces here. So we have everything that we need. And the nice thing about this is that there's something that they can go back and do. But one of the big pieces of this is the um, practice sheets. So a lot of kids will struggle with the practice practice sheets and I can totally see why I'm going to find one here for you because you have a page with a bunch of words on it and usually it's multiple pages and especially for a student who struggles this is way too much to try and do all at once it's just way too much and so um let me show you another one and some lessons have really long ones like this look here and some some lessons will have pages like this and it's so much and you do not want your child to get bogged down in this or to feel overwhelmed by this now some students this will not bother at all and if that's the case go for it if you have a student who's a really strong reader and they're picking up on everything and they find these burdens to them don't do the whole thing don't feel like you have to read every single word on here. The whole point of these is to just give children the opportunity to use the skills that they're learning to decode words and to become faster at it. But this, if this is causing meltdowns, you can totally adapt it and do other things. You don't have to do it all if your child's understanding. So what I've done is I'll go through section by section and I come up with games. And we do not do this, we do a little bit every day. Um, instead of, so we'll have our main lesson and then after that, it might take us five or six days to get through these and that's fine. We'll just take as long as we need to get through. Um, but for this one, there's a game that they have called Fun with Emojis. So I have that set up here in the front because we use it different ways and they have the emoji cards. We'll set them out, take turns drawing the cards and then I will take turns with my child I will read one with the emoji I have and then he will read one and then I will read one and then he will read one. Just hearing these words and I will point to them as I read them so that he can follow along too and see what I'm doing. But it's less overwhelming. If I notice he's starting to tire, even if it's before I had planned, we stop and save the rest for later. So that is something that we do. And also um, another game that I'll do is I will cut these up and you can draw pictures. If your child doesn't like to draw, don't do that activity. Um, so we have all the games here in the book 
the word flippers. Um, and then this is another game with the pieces in here. I just used con construction paper and tape, so this is not expensive. So here's another one. So we have a Feed the Monster. You In your book will come a little monster cutout that I don't have, where you cut a hole in his mouth and you can feed stuff to him. So sometimes we'll feed our word cards. Sometimes we can feed these. And I just, I will cut up the fluency sheet so that the chunks are much smaller and it's less overwhelming for my child. And that can be really helpful for kids who are struggling to read. Um, sometimes you have to make a copy because they're front and back, but just cutting it up. And even if we don't do all of that in one day, that's fine. We can do what we can do and then come back and finish. And then this is another one, take to the stage, where we take turns reading these and then we act them out. So suddenly this page to read that is overwhelming becomes a fun game. So um, I've done that with a lot. In this case, the King's Jester. So there are, I have cut the words up and put them into different sets and here's some phrases. And we're gonna make silly sentences with these. If we only get through one set a day, that's fine. And then we can do more the next day, but we're just gonna have fun and make silly sentences and laugh with these. Um, and there's all sorts of games and ideas. There's games that they recommend as well that you can do, but feel free to break it up and make it easier for your child. So then um, it is important to be reading to your child. So then we're gonna go to the lessons about the stories. Now, if you have a child who is a very strong reader and does not need to read both stories, that's fine. Um, often kids do want to read both stories. Um, and then there's the way that you approach this. So there's a few schools of thought as far as reading. One school of thought says you do not read these things to your child ahead of time because it is true that sometimes students with dyslexia or learning problems can learn to memorize what they've seen. And then when it comes time for them to read it, they're not actually reading the words, they're just spitting back what they've memorized. However, I feel like um, depending on the way that you're doing it, it could also be helpful for a child to hear the words first. So you can do this all in one day. If you have a strong child, you can break it up and do all of story one and all the activities in one day and all of story two in the next day. Um, another thing that you can do is you can um, do your review for the day with your phonogram and your word cards. And then you can do the activity that goes with the story, skip the warm up for the day do the vocabulary and active, act, activate prior knowledge talking about the story, but instead of your student reading the story, you read the story to your student. Then come back the next day and do the warm up sheet. So I'm gonna show you a warm up sheet that I have in here just to kind of see what that's like. So these warm up sheets can also be intimidating sometimes too. Now there are um, tools like this that you can get for free online. There's also um, what comes with the program. You can get a card like this to help you just see one word at a time. And sometimes that can be helpful for a child. But I think the point in all of this is to make it fun. So the idea is that these are words that your child will encounter in the story. Now, if you have already read it to them the day before, this is going to be easier because they'll already have those words in their mind. And what you're doing is you're warming up your student so that they get to what's called a warm reading versus a cold reading. A cold reading is when you come to something reading it not really knowing what you're going to read or what's going to what what's going to be there. And a warm reading is when you've kind of warmed up with some of the you've read and you've kind of encountered all the things that you're going to encounter in the story so that it's easier for you. Any names are going to be in this part, any tough words or tough vocabulary is going to be included in this part. So I recommend that you still go over this with your child to warm them up. You can even talk about what you read about the story the day before and then you come to your book and you read the story. Now one thing that you can do, sorry I'm trying to open this up here, one thing that you can do to check and make sure that your child is in fact reading and is not um, just parroting back something that they've memorized is to have them follow the words with their finger. Um, because if they're following with their finger, that is going to show that they know, you know, what words are going, going, um, 
are going with them. And I recommend um, when I do have lessons, now the way that All About Reading is written, you only read each story one time. But on the days that my child is not reading a story for um, the lesson, and I've done this many times, I highly recommend having your child read to you, to your dog, FaceTime a grandparent, whatever the case may be, and read one story that they've already read, so that's already familiar with them, read that to someone every single day so that they are practicing those words so that they're getting more confident in the stories that they know and that's going to help build their confidence as well so that is another thing that you can do so then you know you go through the next lesson the same way and and you can just you know work on it that way now i'm going to turn this around and talk to you just a little bit more so I am hoping that some of those ideas are helpful for you and that they might give you a few ideas that are worth trying with your own child. And if you have questions, please leave them for me um, in the comments below because I really, I would love to answer them and help you troubleshoot problems and solutions that you have. Now it is true that, that All About Reading isn't going to be the best for absolutely everyone. It's just the way that it is because people do learn differently. But I think a lot of times with adaptation, it's not so much, you know, being a tutor, um, a lot of times you're not given, well, never really are you given the luxury of choosing your curriculum. Your, your student comes to you with a curriculum that they have, with lessons that they have to learn through that. So you have to learn to adapt whatever curriculum they have, whatever they're given, to pull in other resources and adapt whatever it is they have to make it work for them. So that's a framework that I'm coming from. And as homeschool parents, we have the freedom to switch curriculum if we need to. We have the freedom to change what we need to. It's not dictated to us. But I think a lot of times we can make things work that we already have. And sometimes we can tend to switch from curriculum to curriculum when the curriculum is not necessarily the problem because some of these additional resources will need to be used regardless of the curriculum, if that makes sense. So I hope that I've kind of given you some tips and ideas. Now, there are some things that, you know, how do you know if you're going too fast for your child? How do you know if you're going too slow for your child? And I would just say, watch their cues, watch their frustration level. You want it to be fun for them. And if at any point you're concerned Definitely bring it up with your pediatrician. Um, see if you can have some kind of testing done to make sure that you can give them the best skills. There are so many resources out there. And one thing that a lot of homeschool parents don't know is that your local school system, your public school system can do testing for you and provide resources for you, even if your child does not attend school there. I don't know if you knew that or not, but someone probably needs to hear that, but you can get resources through your local school system and continue to homeschool your child. But um, I'm hoping here that you have a few more ideas, a few more tools up your sleeves about All About Reading. This video is ridiculously long. I'm sure I forgot some things. So please, please leave your questions in the comments below and I will be excited to help. And let me know if you like this kind of video because I would be happy to go through other types of curriculum. I would be happy to talk about different, different things. Now, I am not an expert on learning disabilities. I am versed in learning disabilities. I know what a lot of them are. I do have great resources through my mom and, um, my dad some too he did teach some special ed but um especially through my mom but i am not an expert in learning disabilities however i can help you think outside the box and be creative um, in ways to help your child who might be struggling in a particular area um, and i can also help come up with some strategies that might be helpful um, in certain certain situations so i don't know I'm not a professional. <laughs> I've had tutoring training. I've had some educational training, but this is my passion. And so I just realized that if it can be helpful to anyone in the YouTube world, um, I should share it. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. And um, if there's other curricula or other programs that you wanna see, or if you wanna know ways that you can adapt other things, um, let me know. And hopefully this is helpful. I'll talk to you later. Bye.